Hello, and welcome to Corby's Book Club, where I tell you about books that I've read that I think you might enjoy. She was a book nerd, she had blonde hair. This week's book has the unusual title of Balzac and the Little Chinese Seamstress. Written by Dai Siji, it was originally published in France in the year 2000, where it became an overnight bestseller and ultimately won several literary awards. It came my way a few weeks ago when I visited my friend for Thanksgiving and uh, she let me take some books from her bookshelf. This one wasn't in the stack, but she said I had to read it, so I did. I was traveling a lot last week and read this in an afternoon. Easy book, fun, surprising finish. I feel like I'm describing a cocktail. In 1968, Chairman Mao Zedong closed all of China's universities and sent all the young people with a high school or higher education into the countryside to be re-educated by the poor peasants through labor. The story of Balzac and the Little Chinese Seamstress follows two of these guys, best friends Lu and the unnamed narrator, as they spend their three mandated years laboring in coal mines and rice paddies in a village outside of Chengdu in the Sichuan province of China. During a visit to a nearby village, the two meet the beautiful daughter of a regionally renowned tailor. Like every other bachelor on the mountain, they fall in love and return to their own village trying to think of ways to win her favor. Sometime later, they visit another friend in another village and discover a suitcase under his bed. When they open it, they're shocked to find a small collection of Western books. Books were one of the most forbidden objects during the Chinese Cultural Revolution, particularly Western books. The boys are a little desperate for the civilization of their youth, so they beg their friend to loan them a book. Ultimately, he gives them a copy of Balzac's Ursula Mirouette. My apologies to France. Balzac and the Little Seamstress is an easy book to read. It's, it's not an elegant, balanced story. It's loose, maybe even careless, but the material redeems. It's not a predictable story. You like these boys, they're the friends, and their competition for this young girl. The subtext here is this. The Western worldview, wherein the primacy of the individual prevails, is, despite its complicating nature, best. The, the Eurocentrism here escapes the usual criticism because the book was written by a guy who lived in both worlds. Along the way, you learn a little about someone who endured the forced re-education, which was one of the harsher aspects of the Chinese Revolution. This isn't exactly a story about literature directly. Rather, it's a story about the power it holds to wake a person up and put them in touch with a deeper understanding of themselves and the world around them. As the boys find out, painfully, books set you free. The word of the week is ellipsis, which means a situation in which words are left out, where nonetheless the meaning is still clear. <clears throat> let me use it in a sentence. Rather than spell out her threat, she let her words trickle into an ellipsis, rife with foreboding. Ooh. That's all for Corby's Book Club. We'll see you next week. She was a book nerd. She had blonde hair with a paperback in her back pocket.